Swedish pancakes. We can't fly to Sweden to try them, so we're going to have to make them ourselves. For these, we're going to need three eggs, one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of sugar, one and a half cups of flour, three cups of milk, and three tablespoons of melted butter, which we forgot to fill. So first things first, we're going to sift all our flour because we want it loose and <coughs> powdery. <coughs> we want our eggs like our pillow fight opponents, well beaten. Swedish pancakes are no laughing matter, so let's get back to making our batter. We combined a little milk with the eggs, and now we're going to add all the salt and sugar and some flour and mix that in. That butter we forgot in the microwave, mix that in with a little more milk. And just when you think you're done feeling like Sir Mix-a-Lot, finally add in the rest of the milk and flour. So now I'm getting pretty nervous. This is our first time making Swedish pancakes. How hot do we get the pan? Will we be able to make them thin enough? How much butter do we Did use? Did I do enough research on how to make these? Will they these? look okay? They're not even real cooked. What are we even doing here? We gotta get out of here. It's a great idea to pull out an induction burner you haven't used in several years. That way, you're unfamiliar with its heat settings. Here goes our first pour. Pan's probably a bit too hot. And I don't think we spread it fast enough. How many will we have to try before we get one that looks halfway decent? <laughs> Probably many. <laughs> Our first Swedish pancake may not look like much, but we did eat it and spoiler alert, it was delicious. So after all the filming and cooking, or trying to cook, I realized the comment I ran into about pouring two tablespoons at a time may have been referencing mini pancakes. We did move over to the stove and started pouring about a fourth of a cup at a time and ended up being able to spread the pancakes a bit thinner, rounder, and with less tentacles. Best way to learn something is to fail at it, I guess. All right, guys, they're done. They look delicious. They smell delicious. And we can't wait any longer. So we're gonna try these out in five different ways. I know there's more ways that they're eaten, but these are just, you know, there's only so many ways we can eat them at one time. So first we're gonna go for plain. And these are much thinner and doughier than uh, our pancakes. They are. They smell really good. They kind of smell like uh, toasted butter. They do. I hope we got them thin enough. We got them as thin as we could get them. We did. Without burning them to a crisp. They look tasty. Before they get any colder, Mm. Wow. They're good on their own. That's um, like much moister than a pancake. The pancake absolutely need a topping. You don't absolutely need it. And I venture to say you could make a savory dish out of that. Maybe. That was good. All right. That was delicious. Now on to the whipped cream topping. Mm. Wow. That was delectable. That was delectable. I don't know how you can get any better than that one. And next, we're going to have lingonberry. Mmm. That was good. That was good. These are good. These are. Next. Cloudberry. Mmm. So far, that's my favorite. That was really good. Up last, cloudberries on a cloud of whipped cream. Mm. Not sure I'm ready. Mmm. Mmm. That was above and beyond my favorite. These are so amazing. I can't believe they eat these for breakfast. Maybe they don't. Maybe they eat them for other times, like dessert. Guys, these are delicious. And they're easy to make. I'm sure we didn't do them like perfectly. We probably were a little bit too thick or we didn't do something just right, but they still came out perfect tasting, I think. 
So why don't you give baking Swedish pancakes a try? Even if you mess up, you're still gonna end up probably with something really delicious. If you enjoyed watching us bungle Swedish pancakes, you might like watching us eat Swedish bread with toppings as if it's the apex of snacking.